Good morning. Welcome to worship, you few brave and mighty souls. And welcome to those who are viewing at home as well. A um, couple of announcements. And the first one I will make is um, Christmas Eve service is here today at 3 p.m. So join us for Christmas Eve service at 3. And if you are interested in going to a Christmas Day service, St. John's has their Christmas Day service at 10 a.m. So for those who are interested in going to a Christmas Day service. Um, the poinsettias will be put out for the Christmas Eve services, so um, keep that in mind. And annual meeting is after the service on January 28th. Um, so, oh, and to answer the questions, roads out in the country are better than in town. So, because everyone asks, like, are you making okay? Roads in the country are a lot better. I also took gravel most of the way, so for those who were curious. Um, but please be careful out there. It is a little treacherous, so just be safe. So with that, are there any other announcements that should be made at this time? If there are none, then let us begin our worship, and we will light the fourth candle of the Advent wreath. <laughs> Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of hosts, for you promised to send a son, Emmanuel, who brought your, pres brought your presence among us, and you promised through your son, Jesus, to save us from our sin. As we have lit the fourth candle, turn us again in your mercy. Strengthen our faith in the words spoken by your prophets. Restore us and give us life that we may be saved. O house of David, come. Help us rejoice, for the Son of God, Emmanuel, comes to be with us. Amen. I invite those who are able to stand as we join together in the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the God and Father, Son, Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. 
loving, and forgiving God. We confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us for our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you. Free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn is People Look East, number 248 in the hymnal. To the only wise God through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. May we with Mary sing your praises and magnify your name as we worship, renew our vision that we may do your will. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, Free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First reading this morning is from 2 Samuel chapter 7. The passage from 2 Samuel is chosen to articulate the royal ideology upon which Luke's narrative depends. Christians see Jesus Christ as the chosen king in the house of God who embodies God's presence on earth. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, 
but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I, I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day but I have been moving about in a tent and tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And the evil doers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The psalm this morning is from Luke, the first chapter which will read responsively. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. The promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. The second reading is from Romans chapter 16, verse 25 through 27. All of Advent, all of the entire Christian year, is summed up in Paul's concluding doxology. We praise the eternal and only wise God who is revealed in Jesus Christ. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long day ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
In the Annunciation in Luke, Luke makes clear that God comes with good news for ordinary people from little known places. This king will not be born to royalty in a palace, but to common folk in a stall. Here Luke highlights the role of the Spirit, a special emphasis in this gospel. The gospel is from Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will be conceived in your now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give you give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to have been barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I always think this gospel lesson sounds so poetic and pretty. There's something about the way they say that the angel says, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. And she's much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this may be. That's lovely. It's beautiful. It's poetic. I think it's not correct. I think this is a bit of revisionist history because the truth is, is if any of us had an angel pop up in the room with of us, we would not be perplexed. We would be absolutely terrified. The truth is, is I think all of us would say first to ourselves, oh no, what have I done? Isn't that a little bit how we are? I mean, in some ways, the angel feels like mom showing up when you least expect it. This idea that I have been caught. It says Mary is much perplexed. And I think Mary is probably absolutely terrified. And then the angel says, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. And I think Mary is still terrified, and then she gets perplexed. Because I think at that point, she's going, I think you have the wrong house. I'm a young girl. I'm a nobody in a town in Galilee. I live in Nazareth. If, the, if God has sent a messenger, Lord, I really, really think, angel, that you got the wrong house. You scared me, and now I'm really scared because you say I am favored. And the truth is, is I think that's how all of our callings with God kind of go, is there's this idea of God isn't going to use me because I'm just me. I am just me. And if the angel Gabriel were to show up, we would be perplexed and terrified and go, you can't be looking for me. But the angel says, do not be afraid. Too late. But I'll do my best. I won't be afraid. And this is where Mary starts to ask questions. Okay, you are going to have a son. And she says, uh, no, 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 
I know how science works on this one. That isn't supposed to happen yet. And she starts to ask questions of God. And I love this idea of the call story because here's the thing. We sometimes think that if God is calling us, we're just to just go forward and it's supposed to be just fine and we're supposed to listen and just do what we're told. And if Mary, this young girl in Nazareth, can start asking questions, I think it gives all of us permissions to say to God, what's up? I don't know what you have in store for me. I don't know if I'm the right person for the job. There's so many reasons this can't work. And there we have, there we have the angel saying, nope, right place, right time. God has decided that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will bear a child. Now, what they don't mention in this story is I am pretty sure that this was way more scary than when the angels showed up. That moment when you realize, I'm going to be a parent. Way more terrifying than having God show up in this story. And Mary says, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And those are words of pure faith. Acknowledging before this that nothing is impossible with God. And then Mary saying, here I am. She's scared. She questions. But in the end, God is calling her to something greater than herself. And even though she doesn't know what that means yet, all she can do is say, here I am. Here I am. And that is really what the calling for each and every one of us is. That we can ask questions, we can be afraid, we can go through all the moments, but eventually to look at God and say, here I am. Yeah, I still think you might have the wrong person, but I'm going to follow. And this is actually part of the calling of Christmas as well. Reminding us that God shows up in the most unexpected ways, in the most unexpected people. And they say, here I am. And that the shepherds will be announced and they follow because they say, okay, this is where God is sending us. And for each and every one of us, all year long, we are called to follow where Christ leads. We can be scared. We can question. We can even think that God has chosen the wrong person. But God has called each and every one of you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Christ has called each and every one of you to worship and then go forth from worshiping sharing that love of others with a world in need. Here we are, servants of the Lord. Let it be with us, according to God's word. Amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn, the day, hymn of the day in the Let's try that again. Let's join together in singing together the hymn of the day in the bleak midwinter, number 294 in the hymnal or on the screen. I invite you to stand.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. You promise mercy to Abraham and Sarah and their descendants forever. Bring your church into thoughtful, caring, and collaborative relationship with those of other faiths. Strengthen our shared values that we work together in caring for our world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. As fields and crops lie dormant, bless them with holy rest. Prepare them to thrive, that they provide abundant food in due season. Protect animals who hibernate and provide for all who scavenge for food in the lean season. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise up the lowly and cast down the arrogant. Teach humility to all in positions of authority. Break down systems of oppression, especially systems that perpetuate inequality and exclusion. Do not allow wealth, power, or pride to become idols that obscure your call to justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Look with favor upon all who cry out to you. Accompany with tenderness all who are afraid or ill, especially Carol, Kevin, and Beth. Rescue all who experience abuse or who live under threat of violence especially refugees, those in Gaza, immigrants, asylum seekers in search of a safe and stable home. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are pleased to make your home among us. Make our homecomings joyful as we gather with friends, families, and chosen families in celebration. Grant safety to all who travel. Sustain the work of Lutheran immigration and refugee services and other ministries that assist in settling of new homes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Blessed are you for Mary and all your servants in every generation who live according to your promise of mercy. We think especially fondly of those who we celebrate the holiday whose absence makes us sad or gives us a time of mourning. Strengthen us by their example until the revelation of your glory is made known. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. We continue with the thanksgiving for the word. Holy God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, wonderful Counselor, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world, and throughout the ages you proclaim newness of life. For your wondrous word, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. In the fullness of time, your word became flesh to shine in your world's darkness, to speak peace to all people, and to welcome us as members of your family. For your loving word, we adore you, O God. We adore you, O God. Grant us now the gift of your spirit that held nourished and protected by your word, we may live as your children, bearing your goodness throughout the world. 
for your powerful word. We praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. All glory to you, holy God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in singing our sending hymn, Joy to the World, number 267 in the hymnal. Thank you. 